Formula One. They redesigned the car for a better fan experience and they used data, AI and cloud to improve the performance. I have here an authority with me, Rob Smedley. He's a data analytics consultant for Formula One and you are doing this already for, for many, many years. And I think you've done a tremendous job now with data analytics to redesign the car, but also you use it for many different other purposes. Can you explain how Formula One is using data and AI, for example? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, it all goes back to when Liberty Media acquired Formula One back in 2017. You know, uh, an American business, they understand the power of data in sports. And really, it was how do we use, you know, the huge amount of data that we have in Formula One. So the, the, the data from the cars, the data from the timing, the data from the weather, the data from the tires. You know, it's a very, very data driven sport at the team level. How do we use that data to bring about a deeper, more engaging experience for the fan? Um, and how do we use data to improve the overall aspect of Formula One? Um, you know, so taking the first part of that, that was to, you know, to, to use the data to, to, to build what we call the insights, you know, the F1 AWS insights. And that's been a real showcase of the partnership between Formula One and AWS, which is to take the data from the cars, take the data from the timing system, and then simplify a really complex story. So simplify a really complex moment in, in, in the race. So that's either forecasting something and, and giving a probability around how the race is going to play out. You know, it's, it's kind of saying to the fan, you know, watch this space because there may not be a great deal happening, you know, on this lap, but in one, two, three laps time, you know, the cars are going to pit, there's going to be some action, you're going to see some changes of position. So it's, it's stuff like that, or it's retrospectively looking at, you know, really key moments in the race and it's analyzing them, it's using the data to analyze it. And I think that, you know, when we introduced these insights, um, you know, three years ago, four years ago, um, they were they were something new for the fan and they were something that the fan kind of sat back and thought, wow, you know, is this something that's going to enhance my experience? I think when you fast forward to today, um, the fan has become much more reliant on using the data, on the insights, on the analytics to be able to follow Formula One. It's such a complex sport that for somebody like me as an engineer who's 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 been involved in this sport for so long, there's no way that I can understand the sport or the race without using data. Yeah. And, and so we're just trying to introduce that on a level that all the fans can engage with, that all the fans can enjoy, and it enhances their experience. Yeah, that's great. And we're here, you were talking about the partnership with AWS. We're here at the AWS Summit in London, which is great to be physically at an event again. And talking about cloud, you have data analytics, which is important, but what is the role of cloud in this, in Formula One? Well, cloud's played a, a, a huge role, really. And, and again, you know, this is a, a real microcosm and showcase into the partnership between AWS and Formula One in as much that, you know, when we've designed this year's car, when Formula One set about supporting the FIA to, to design the 2022 car with very, very clear targets in mind of closer racing, of cars being able to follow each other more closely, um, without having a, a lot of disturbance from the car in front. You know, that was a very technical exercise. It was an exercise where we, we brought in our, our technical design team, our aerodynamics team, and they set about designing a, a car that aerodynamically was much kinder to the car behind. In order to do that, we, we used a, a platform called computational fluid dynamics. Yeah. Computational fluid dynamics is a simulation environment, like a wind, a wind tunnel simulation environment. Um, it's very, very heavy on, on compute power. So when we use traditional um, platforms that were available to us, on-prem platform, it was 500 course. You know, each simulation with two cars, two, two full-size cars, um, in, a, in a computational fluid dynamics environment, it was like 40 hours for each simulation. When, when, when AWS um, architected a solution for us, which was you know, using their EC2 platform and using cloud technology, and we were spinning up 2,000, 5,000, 7,000 cores, you know, we were getting that down. And to get to something which was gonna be a robust design that we turned into the technical regulations, and you see the result this year. Yeah, the result was great. It's really an exciting season. And you're talking about 40 hours. 40 hours is a lot in a week from Formula One race to the other one where you need to perform and you need to win. Everything is about winning. If you look now to data and to AI and to cloud, what's the role for the teams to win or lose? Because sometimes it's hundreds of seconds, tens of seconds difference. 
how, how do these teams use data to win and how important is it to them? Well, data has, you know, for, from a team's point of view, data has always been incredibly important in, in Formula One. You know, we, we, we in the teams, in the, even in the early 90s, we created a, a big data problem before the term big data was even invented, right? Yeah. Um, so we've always had to be ahead of the, of the technology curve. It's always been important to, to be using the latest technology and to be driving the latest technology as well. And it's no different now, you know, you fast forward, you know, 25 years, 30 years later, it's absolutely no different to how the teams use te um, data and technology to be able to drive solutions, to be able to drive decisions that help them make, you know, a better, faster, safer Formula One car. Um, ML recently, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence, just in the recent past, so in the last five years, definitely it's become much more prevalent. So if you look at race strategy, for example, you know, race strategy is hugely complex. You've got 20 players in that 90 minutes, each with all different parameters and different decisions they can make around tires, around degradation, around when to stop, around how many pit stops to make, how long's the pit lane, how long does it take you to get in and out, all of this type of stuff. That's a very, very complex problem when you put 20 players. On top of that, you've then got the fact that it's human beings that make decisions. It's the guys like me who sit on the pit wall that make decisions. So is there a pattern to what those human beings do? Is there a pattern to the decisions that the tools make that inform the human beings that make decisions? If you can use ML to kind of assimilate all of that data and to just give you that one or two seconds advantage over your competitors, it's like high-speed trading, right? In the financial world, you just need one or two seconds of advantage and it's a huge advantage in Formula One. It means that you're making a decision one or two seconds faster than your, your competitor. You could be in the pit lane, they might stay out. That's a position that can be a race win. So ML is becoming more and more important. I'm, I'm a huge Formula One fan. It's a fascinating sport, but you even created the experience to a much bigger level. Rob, thanks a lot for your insights. And for the audience, thank you for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.